we actually have this furniture here. And as, as you can see, whenever you click on any of these, these are not, not objects, they are cabinets. They, so they were designed, for sure, they were designed with the cabinet tool. Otherwise, they would be object. If, I, if this would be something that I have downloaded from the uh, 3D warehouse, this would appear as an object. So let's see what's the trick behind how something as <coughs> complex like, like this could be designed in, in the software. And I think based on the knowledge that we learned before how this tool works, it will be easier to understand how, how, how this happens. First things first, let's see the logic. Because if I open this slightly, I can see it opens to two, two different directions. Wait, so actually, you can define two fronts to one cabinet. Yeah, just as actually we did that before with the, you know, the, the curvy one as yes. well. We actually had two, um, two fronts, but one, one panel was an we just used as a, yes. uh, a fixed panel. But actually, what happens here? Let's let's dig it deeper into this. Uh, the shape is not important. We are interested in the in the logic. The logic is six shapes, six uh, panels. The bottom panel. This is a front. That's actually also a front, with mm -hmm. non-openable fixed panels. That's also a front. And perhaps that's a core or a back panel, whichever is fine. Now it's either but it's way. It's the work. Wolf, so I Suggested. See, see how this works again. Let me just open this again and see uh, what happens here. When I open this, there are these doors opening, and there are those decorative parts here, mm -hmm. and those are somehow, you know, they're there. But how to how to solve something like this? Let me just close this back. And to be able to show you how that works, they, they're actually doors. I can I can tell you for sure that 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 is a door. Uh, and you know, you can you can just simply alt click on any any of these things to to ask the software to, to let you know what is that. That's a door. That's a panel. That's a top panel, actually. Uh, and this is a fixed door. Mm -hmm. how, how can you design a door like this? This, this does not look like a door. It's, no. it's like a de decorative panel. And actually, well, this was designed as a panel and applied as a door, but it's just, just a decorative item. Uh, so let's just dig deep and find what's that. That's a custom object. And let's just edit the properties so to see how it builds up. It's certainly a cabinet door with a specific shape. Again, it's not important how you design it. The logic is more, more important. So now it can be stretched and work properly, even if it's very long. And the way it was designed, let's see, has it any you know, rounding? No, no, there is nothing. Are there any holes? No. No, no other uh, holes or, or bevels like that uh, either. And there are Subsection. seven different substruction profiles. And there is. Let's just start with this, this most obvious, obvious one, the, the vertical, the red one here. That's a vertical you know, puff, and there is this little thumb-like you know, mm -hmm. carving shape. Yes. And that's, that's, that's swept along, and it's you know, just removing that part from the wood. And that happens here as well, and that happens here as well. I see. So there are three uh, thumb-like cuts <coughs> from top to bottom. Yeah, and that's you know they are limited. You know, 50 from the top, from the 50 from the bottom, and 10 from the side. The center is you know locked to both sides or unlocked. Either way is fine. And the other side here, it is locked to the left. And this see. is how you set set up something like this. And what about those uh, weird shapes? Yeah. Well, the top? top one. First things first. It was cut from the side with a, uh, a shape like this. Mm -hmm. Let me just click uh, this uh, this one. See, this was the cutting shape, and this was the puff. So it was just you know swept along that that way. And there was another one, and it, it was happening here. Yeah, and there is another one. It's in the center, but it's actually sweeping through the whole thing, and it's this one. Oh, See so again, this, this is this is you know just. There's a vertical cut, a horizontal cut, another horizontal cut, and there, then there are the carvings. So mm -hmm. This is how it was uh, built. And then it was saved. And uh, let me just uh, skip this part. And then it was applied into a zone. And there, there are actually, see, one, two, three, four, five, six zones here. One, two, three, and perhaps there are other divisions inside. And that's how it was divided. Yes. And then now I have a vertical bar, which I can fill up with the door, which is actually a closed, uh, I mean, an, a fixed uh, panel. There are doors and a fixed panel. So this is how you can build I up see. a logic like this. So the whole, you only need to keep uh, track of, of how you can divide this, this unit mm -hmm. uh, and how you can fill it up with either fixed or, or, or opening panels. 
that, that's the that's the only thing the panels can be used for many ways and not only for doors it can be used also for for uh, like decorative panels and one very good thing here actually is that if you remember <coughs> when we when we uh, looked at how that vertical panel is designed it was much shorter than how we see it yes right here yes but when it's applied to the whole length of this of this unit it's not stretched but yeah. it's proportionately resized yeah it's much better than a downloaded object stretched here uh, because as you can see again this door is the same prototype as this door they're identical on the design level when I design this I click here and I find okay this is let's see what did that it's it's a custom object it's a default object Actually. so I can find on the default page mm -hmm. that's a custom object it was not saved uh, but it's okay I just go to find the settings and see this is again a cabinet door having certain features like there is a Oh, I mean, there is a, an inset, there is another inset, there is, you know, cuts and bevels and decorative profiles carved in the wood, and this is how it was built. And again, it is always, you know, applying the automatic um, profile wherever it's possible to be able to create something that, that when you stretch it, it will apply itself automatically and properly mm -hmm. to, the, to the new shape and the new size. Any other examples <coughs> to the cabinet door item? Well, I think... Uh, now that we understood how this works, when I close this, I can show you uh, an, an extreme of how you, you could also use this, and that's the actually the decorative panels on the wall here. See, they are the same thing all around, and actually, if I select this, this appears to be a cabinet. Now this cabinet is th there. Is there are many other ways you could solve this. Uh, I could even use the railing, for example. Yes. Uh, but this specific method tells you another idea and this idea is that you don't even have to have a cabinet with panels I mean with sides and bottom and things like oh, the, uh, if you use it like this this could be also something like you know uh, just a just a panel just a just a cabinet without the body but only the doors mm -hmm. and you know you can even create a you know a hidden door or something like that oh, but, yes, but yes. That's, that, that's not the important point this is the this is the important thing that this has a certain width which is fitting the wall there's a there's a depth which is now it's 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 uh, not that not that important there's a height it's it's handled as a base in it but this is the trick here the most important thing happens here this is a multiple divided actually five numbers of these units are are, are hap happening here and this is again something that was selected like an item like this i see <coughs> I understand uh, any other alternative uses well, uh, I think uh, talking about uh, decoration and things like that, we are done. But there is one another thing that mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about, and then that's actually a specific use, uh, a very, very, very specific use of the um, of the panel, and that's actually the shelving. If well, you would like to, could be, you could be using other things as well. There are, you know, all of our customers are using different you know, tricks to to make shelves come to life, but. The yeah. one benefit of the of the um, of the cabinetry or the <coughs> uh, the furniture front item is that you could just customize it and you can use it as many times as you want. Yes, yes. For example, that's that's a very good reason to do that. If you would like to have some carving in, in the shelf, that's mm -hmm. okay. that's again some 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 uh, some idea why you should use the uh, the, the cabinet uh, front tool. So let's just go and find first what what we are talking about. So see here on this empty wall, I would like to apply a few shelves. I just go and use the cabinet door. And actually, there is an orientation, and by default, it's vertical, but you can set it to horizontal, and mm -hmm. it looks like a shelf, so you can use it as a shelf. Yes, you can even save it as a, sh as a shelf unit uh, wherever you want in the libraries, and then you just ready-made pickup and, mm -hmm. and, and apply it all around. Let me just okay, say, okay, I would like to place it here. Let me align it. It was not a perfect click. It's just uh, move it around. I can even snap it to the wall using the... Uh, move from and you know just snap it to this point for example around here yeah like that and the height is not correct so let me just change it to I don't know 500 or something like that okay so I, I, I'm having a shelf here uh, and what I do uh, would like uh, what, what I would like to create here I just would like to make multiple copies uh, so I just multiply it and say well, let's see I would like to have four more for additional shelves and then I click here and then let's just place the where the where the top should be, and then it's equally mm -hmm. divided. It's automatic and that's one solution. Going further beyond this, let me show you another uh, method. This is this is cool when you would like to have 
uh, shelves that you would like to move individually. Mm -hmm. But if you would like to use it, if you would like to handle it as a unit, you can go with the, with the unit uh, option. Let me just erase that. You can create the cabinet. And let me just go with a simple unit. I think I will go with, well, let's just go with this one. This is fine. Uh, I just would like to get rid of the door. Yeah, there's a there's the door here. Let me just uh, erase this. I mean this one. And then let me just simplify this. I don't want to have divisions. I just would like to go back to the defaults. I, I just would like to erase everything. I don't I don't need any of these. This also here. This also here. And then you know using the logic here. Uh, first things first. Let's get rid of the the, the lags. I don't want to have the lags. Need that now. And then using the logic, let's just remove everything. Uh, in this page, there's nothing appearing here that, that this is something that I would like to hide. There's another one, another one. that's the top. Let's just hide that as well. And that's the bottom. Let's just hide that here. So now I'm, I'm, I'm actually having a hollow unit with having nothing. And then I'm going here and say, I would like to use a horizontal you know, layout with, an, with a specific number of items appearing here, uh, around here. And let's just create. And now I have the I same, so but, but the point here is that now <coughs> I can handle it as a unit. So I can, all, I can use all the three and reshape, change the depth, and, and you know, move it all around as together as they are you know, bound together in, in, in a unit like that. Perfect. 